Hi there. Welcome back to the English class. This chapter, Every Success Story is Also Great Stories of Great Failures, is time and again reminding us one thing, that if you persevere, if you try hard, then failure is not the opposite of success. Failure becomes a part of success. Yes or no? We've been seeing so many personalities and their life stories, numerous, numerous failures leading to final success. So let's take one more aspect of this chapter, study skills. There's a lovely story here. How many of you have read it? When I read it, I was left spellbound. It's so beautiful. Let's go through it. There was once an old carpenter. He was very dedicated all his life. He was ready to retire. He told his employer contractor, Sir, I've had enough. I want to rest. I want to spend time with my wife and my extended family. What is extended family? Beyond parents, uncles, aunts, cousins. He would miss the paycheck, but then he did not mind. He said, I have enough to go on. But the contractor was very sad to hear that because this carpenter was a very good worker of him. He was sad to see him go. So he said, please, before you leave, one last personal favor for me. Could you build one last house for me? And the carpenter agrees. He starts off work, but then he's half-hearted. He's not interested in it as much as he was interested his whole life. Remember, he was a dedicated carpenter. But now, with this last project of his life, he started, he resorted to shoddy workmanship. What is resorted means? Turned to. Shoddy workmanship, that means low quality, not up to the mark. He started using inferior quality materials. He was being careless. All that was on his mind was how to just get over this project. It was an unfortunate way to end a dedicated career. Isn't it so? I mean, the last project of his life should have been the best. Yes? Didn't I tell you the ones who finish well are the ones who succeed? This man was, did not do that. When the carpenter finished his work, the employer came and then he inspected the house. He had a look at what the carpenter built. Then, what did the contractor do? He took out the keys of that house from his pocket. He gave it to the carpenter and said, Take this. This is yours. This is my gift to you. The carpenter was shell-shocked. What a shame. If he had only known that he was building his own house, he would have done it all so differently. Doesn't it happen to us? Yes, we can do our best. We can do much better than what we are doing. But what's happening to us? We are not realizing one thing. Look at you, 10th class students. You must realize that every day in your life is like building one wall of your house. Your life is that ultimate house you're building and you're going to live in it once you finish it, yes? 30 years later, can you say, oh, I did this thing wrong. Can I come back and repair? Can you come back to 10th class and write your exams again? No. Look at what happened to the carpenter. So it is with us. That's what the author is saying. We build our lives one day at a time, often putting less than our best. Then with a shock, we realize that this is the house I've built and I'm supposed to live in it. If we could do it over, we would do it so much differently. But can you go back? No. Now the carpenter is wondering, why did I do this? Why did I lose a golden opportunity of doing my best before retiring? You are the carpenter and every day you hammer a nail, you place a board or erect a wall in your life. Someone once said, life is a do-it-yourself project. No one else is building up your life. You, your choices, your actions are building your life. Yes or no? 
your attitude and the choices you make today helps build the house you will live in tomorrow. Therefore, build wisely. So what are we learning from this story? Now is in front of you. The present, it's like a gift to you. So utilize the now to build the future because once you're in the future, you'll never get this moment back. So that was a wonderful story. Now let's do the small exercise. You just heard the story. Now let's see. Look at this table here. The point to be observed. The first one, the setting or location in which the story took place. If you've observed, the carpenter was building the entire house. So this could have been a house in a cold country. In cold countries, people build their houses with wood rather than mason, building it with bricks and cement. So most probably, this story took place in some cold country. The main characters, I would say the contractor, the employer, and the employee, the carpenter. Do you see any more characters here? These are the two main characters. The main events. He prompts that there are five of them. Let's have a look. The first event, the carpenter telling his employer contractor that he wishes to retire. Then, the contractor requesting the carpenter to build one last house, one final project. Third, the carpenter taking up the project but working on it reluctantly, half-heartedly, with shoddy workmanship. Next, the employer telling the carpenter that this house is your gift. And final main event, the carpenter realizing that he has lost an excellent opportunity of building a house for himself that is of good quality. Why is it important to be of good quality? Because if you're always repairing, you will not have peace of mind. If there are always mistakes in your life, you will always be wondering or troubled by the past rather than planning for the future. So these are the five main events of the story is what I feel. The next part, the turning point in the story. Where do you think the story turns? I feel the part where the contractor gives the house the carpenter made to him, I feel that is the turning point because we didn't expect that to happen, did we? And next, what is the irony of the story? First, just understand what's the meaning of irony. Irony is when what we expect is completely different to what has actually happened. So irony can be of two kinds. It could be funny or it could have a tint of sadness to it. For example, I once lived next door to a shop and the name of the shop was Always Open. And that shop had a board hanging at the gate saying, Always Open is closed on Sundays. Whoops. Isn't Always Open supposed to be open all the time? So that is irony in a funny way. Sometimes irony can have a sad hint to it. Like this story, how sad that the carpenter made a below quality house for himself without knowing that it's going to be gifted to him. So that is the irony of this story. And what is the message of this story? The message of this story is the moment called now, the present. It is like a gift. Make the best of it because you never know how it molds your future. So always, right now you're listening to me in this class, you're, we are discussing this story. What must you do? Pay attention, stay here, just listen to what I'm saying. So the now is the most important moment in your life. Yes, that's the message. Possible title. Let's give this story a name. What must you do while choosing a title for a story? That title should tell the reader something about the story, but not in just a simple way like the carpenter and the contractor. No, it is not giving across the message of the story. How could we name it so that the message of the story comes out? If you think of it, the house, 
the gifting of the house to the carpenter, that was the turning point of the story. Shall we name the story on those lines? Let's name it the gift. How about that? We are not talking about the house that the carpenter got as a gift. What gift did the carpenter get? He got the gift of realization. Yes or no? Did we also realize that now is the best moment to do the best? So let's name it the gift. So that was your study skills part of this chapter. Another chapter coming up. Another amazing personality we are going to talk about. See you soon.